Hey baby, this is Ro and welcome to the back of the classroom. Today we're going to talk about Law 26, Keep Your Hands Clean from 48 Powers of Law by Robert Greene. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, get your tenant taken for the day, and let's get started. So this is an interesting chapter. Like I said, it's about keeping your hands clean, which reminds me of a quote that goes... The appearance of the law must always be upheld, especially when it's being broken. That was in the movie Gangs of New York, if you haven't seen that one. Um, so, yeah. How do you keep your hands clean? What does it mean to keep your hands clean? Why do you need to keep your hands clean? If you're in any type of running or competition or you're trying to be of some status the first thing everybody does is point out your failures well you're not good enough because you've done these things you're not good enough because you've done these things and if you haven't been accepting of it you haven't come to terms with it if the people around you and society itself haven't forgiven and forgotten it's not something everybody knows you got a skeleton in your closet you can be demonized for it People want to know, like, when you go to a supermarket, if you go anywhere and you purchase something, you want to know whatever it is you're purchasing is exactly what it is. There's nothing wrong with it. It's been evaluated, tested, reevaluated, retested, and it's it's been pretty much made to be something that won't harm or hinder anything about you or progress, anything that you have going. If it do, people have concerns and they don't want it. So everything has to come damn near perfect. And we all know we don't live in a perfect world, so nothing's perfect. Everybody has some sort of quote unquote skeletons in their closet because what do we know about people? People are shameful. People have things or done things they might not necessarily be proud of. And people are too overwhelmed with the fact that we are aware people aren't the type of people to let things go. They want to hold it against you. They want to make it seem like well, you're not perfect. Well, technically no one is. And you just have to, for the most part, well, you made all the mistakes, so we don't like you. Or we're going to deal with the person who made the least amount of mistakes. We'd rather deal with that person if they made the, they made the most of their lives and they didn't make as many mistakes as the next one. But this is a false perception because everybody should be willing to do things and be willing to fail because you learn your lessons through failure. You don't make mistakes. You don't appreciate the things that you have. If I gave you a thousand dollars, you might blow it. But if you had to earn it, you treat it a little bit differently. Like if you took, if we played a game of Monopoly and you started off with a thousand dollars, a couple of, you know, five hundreds, hundreds, fifties, twenties, ones, you do things with that money you wouldn't do in real life if I gave you that much money in those same denominations to go out there and make something of yourself. You don't act the same. So people have devised a way. So you gotta read this book, and they talk about concealing your mistakes. Should nobody know about it. Which really wouldn't make too many mistakes if you had mentors. You go see, you go to a doctor, get your health right. You go to a dentist, get your teeth right. You go to a therapist, get your mind right. And you have mentors that help you and guide you. Why? Because you want to make the least amount of mistakes as possible. If you're with someone and they're showing you all the do's and don'ts and this is what happened and that what happened. It's very hard for people to go, oh, well, look, you did that wrong. No, I was being mentored and I was being shown how the wrong way can lead to these things and the right way can lead to those things. And we're making the differences and the comparisons. And it was a learning exercise, not me doing something wrong. Right? So with the right guidance, with the right leadership, with the right village, with the right mentality of people around you that help guide you in the right direction, that's one way of concealing your mistakes. No one's perfect. Mistakes will happen. So how do you handle things in life? With grace. Be humble. Have people around you. Ask questions. Get information. 
and it's hard to fail, right? And just understand it's not the obstacles you go through in life that people are judging you on. They're judging you on how you handled yourself while in those situations, right? It wasn't two boxers in a fight. And we go, oh, they was in a fight. No, it's look how that boxer defeated that boxer. Look at his skill. Look at his ability. Yes, they both were in a fight, but it's how they fought which you determine a winner. That's how you judge. Look at any type of sports. Look at any type of activity. It's not the activity. It's how you conducted yourself while doing it. That's what determines your level of greatness. That determines how you're judged. So keeping that in mind, whatever it is that you do, make sure you are great at it. Learn everything. If you're not going to take the time to learn it, expect those who took the same craft that you're involved in who took it more serious to be better. And whatever they were willing to take to be successful, that was their drive to push them to go further, to do more, to have more, to be not scrutinized by society and whoever else there might be that might want to, you know, penalize them for certain things that they might have done. Um, some people use scapegoats, right? Right, which is a very old act of removing accountability how many times you was young and somebody broke something or you broke something or you was playing with somebody and something broke however that scenario played out when your parents came and go who broke that and both people pointed to each other no one took accountability it was that was you using your sibling or the person you was with as a scapegoat you didn't have to be taught it you just know you don't want to be held accountable for it And that grew in the different areas of your life. But now we're just talking about this here as far as power, right? Because if you did something right, you want all the credit. You do something wrong, you don't want to be associated with it. Same concept. You want to remove as much failure and mishap that other people is going to judge you on while using a scapegoat. Right. And they say powerful people use scapegoats all the time. Look at how you've seen and heard all these scandals. And the first thing they start doing is shifting the blame or they tell you it falls downhill. Right. You can't touch the people on top. You got to get all the people on the bottom level. Scapegoats. It all it's, it's I guess it's a common practice that people will continue to use over and over and over and over again. But that's when people do their investigation. They try to find. The, the, the main culprit, the main reason for these things happening so they can stop it and put an end to it. Um, cat's paw is another term, an ideal idea that's used. And that's uh, someone who does the work for you, right? It saves you energy, effort, and it saves your appearance. Now, that could be some forms, employees, minions, people who work for you. They do the work for you. Same product, same thing, except someone else is doing the work for you. You work in a company, you're on a job. Yeah, the boss can do that same thing, except he got you doing it. You're the cat's paw. You're the one who's doing the work while other people get to sit back and pretty much not do anything or do something else. Now, at times, you might need to delegate responsibilities and you got so much going on, you need help. Just understand you are doing a job for someone who's either incapable or can't or don't have the time, resources, energy to do it themselves. So that's what training is for. I need you to do it as good as I would do it. So when I walk away, I know the job is getting done properly. Same concept everywhere. In fact... That's what I'm going to do. You're learning this live in the moment. I'm going to show similarities between your, how would you call it? The upper society, upper class world, the working world to the underworld. Because everything is the same. It's just who governs what, who's, how you're choosing to operate and what you do and how you do it. And I'm going to show you the similarity between the working class or the uh, working world and the underworld. So if you made it this far on the podcast, I thank you. 
check out Rose clothing line. It's Rose Locker. Uh, I'm going to do some interesting things moving forward with it. Check it out. Let me know what y'all think. I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Yeah.